uh, tell me who your friends are and I, I'll tell you who you are. Right. And I think it comes to be true in a, to a certain degree because um, our life can sometimes be identified by the, the five most uh, the five people that we hang out with the most. Right. Uh, just because identity and who we are tends to be sometimes derived from who we hang out with. Uh, people confirm, they reconfirm, and they sometimes uh, renew uh, the perspective that we sometimes create for ourselves of what we believe to be true about who we are, right? And so if that is to be true, then it makes sense that, you know, people who we hang out with are also affecting what we're believing about ourselves to be true and to be possible as well. Because their actions are aligned to what they believe about themselves because it's reconfirmed by the people that they're surrounded with. Community, the broader thing, right? Uh, society, community, and then like groups that you hang out with maybe. Um, you know, I think there can be positive and negatives. You know, just like there's positive and negatives to anything. You know, if you hang with the wrong group, you're more likely to fall into their behaviors, you know, negative behaviors maybe. If you hang with like a, a more like a group that doesn't, you know, do certain things and you're less likely to do certain things. Uh, that's just kind of like the nature of, uh, I guess it's the nature of peer influence. It's the nature of the in group versus the out group. Um, but in terms of like community itself, you know, I used to not see community as important as maybe I do, you know, now, or at least that same areas when I started realizing the importance of it. The same areas, man, we both know that was a great community. Like the community there was yeah. uplifting and stuff like that. And, yeah. Like it's a different environment and I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's just, yeah, it's almost like a little bubble in the whole world. Yeah. yeah. Microcosm of society, you know, having a positive community like St. Mary's, for example, it does affect the way you see the world. It does affect, it did affect the way I saw the world compared to moving back, you know, to hometown or something like my mood was lifted at St. Mary's. I felt more connected to people like around me. Um, I felt more related to people around me in some way because people were on the same level, like not just like religiously or spiritually. And there's a variety. Not everyone was like believing in God there, but, you know, like it, enough to where it was, you felt like you knew a lot of people who were and, and they actually strengthened my beliefs in different areas and enhanced them and changed them and modified them. You know, whenever you have that type of community, you don't want to step outside of the lines that they have already created. It's a culture, right? That's why you see some companies grow, you know, because they created a really good company culture, right? I, I think sometimes culture is very underestimated in communities, right? Because every community, you know, whether it be a small community like a family or a community like a company or like a community in, in terms of just friends that you hang out with together, um, you know, any type of community develops some sort of culture. And sometimes you see that in companies, like they have the main culture, but then each department has a different culture. If you don't have culture, you know, and one is just trying to develop by themselves, have their own culture, you know, or what would you call that? Your own identity or, you know, your standards. But when you have other people, other communities that are setting up good cultures to actually thrive in, good environments to thrive in, then that can help you become a better, better self as well, right? Yeah, if it's, a, you know, a positive culture and, you know, just like anything in life, negative and positive, it's like a negative culture could bring people down. Uh, it could lead to negative consequences. Uh, there's cultural norms, you know, rules, implicit rules that aren't really spoken out loud, but we all just kind of follow from following each other's behavior. And we learn them growing up kind of thing. Or even if we come to a new culture, we start picking up on them. And I think the community itself provides structure, right? Okay. For, for oneself. Structure it with provides... Yeah, it, it, it helps you keep, stay sane as well, right? Not only because of the social aspect that we need human interaction, right? Uh, at least the, the majority of people do. Um, but also community itself provides some structure to one's life because then, and I think it, it, it comes 
it, it brings it back to like more ethical aspects of things, right? Because when if if we don't have a culture or rules in itself, then anything is possible. Then you know I could just do whatever I want. The powerful influences that groups really have on us as individuals. I mean, groups really do. They shape our thinking. They shape the norms that behaviors and attitudes that we develop and those attitudes behaviors and beliefs that we develop from in being in that group for a certain period of time develop and morph into manifest behaviors that we do and we you know that we act out in the real world and then other people mm -hmm. react to those behaviors and form a perception of us based on behaviors that we develop and show because of the group that we're hanging out with we project those behaviors that we learn from that group the people around us react a certain way and then the way we form ourself depends on how others react to us. And so then our development of self even becomes impacted by the behaviors we project that get reflected back onto the way people respond to those behaviors. And then, you know, we take that in and incorporate that into our sense of self. And that affects the way we develop ourselves and the way others perceive us, I guess. You know, when we're growing up, especially during the middle school, high school era uh, time of our lives, we tend to gravitate to whatever group accepts us, right? right you know, if, if, you know, if theater accepts me, well, then I'll go to that group. Or maybe we do find a group, but it's not the best of groups, you know, that is trying to push you forward or get the best out of you. Maybe it's trying to take advantage of you, right? But sometimes we stay in those groups because we feel accepted. It's more painful to be alone than to go with the per first person who accepts you. And that's yeah. the group that accepts you. So, of course, you don't want to leave that group or that person even, you know, because leaving that means being alone. And being alone at that age is painful. Like